Hey, hey people, welcome. Just about getting to the time when we start. We don't to start at 7.30, so we've got an early start. Bang on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, of course, you're listening to the music of Samuel Midas and a uh, very, very pro prolific uh, reggae artist there. And he has a lovely music that I like to listen to. It gives me inspiration. You're tuning to Virtual Community Dialogue. I know you're not seeing my face. I'm deliberately not allowing you to see my face at this point. Um, welcome, welcome. Invite somebody else. Remember. To And we'll run this little ad one more time. Yes, and my name is uh, Caesarina Paul. Everybody calls me Cees. I'm cool with Cees. That's my nickname if you want. <laughs> All right. So as I say, welcome. Please invite somebody else to join you. Um, I hope you had a splendid week. I had a very good and productive one. Some days a little challenging. Hi, Jose. Good to see you. Good night. Welcome there from St. Vincent. Um, hoping that lots more people will join us. I see some more folks are online. So tell us that you're here tonight. Give me a little shout out. I'm saying hi and hello and, you know, all the good things to you. I know we had some challenging news this week in our own nation with... Uh, some added uh, cases of COVID-19, but we are asked to remain vigilant and we are asked to practice and to implement the protocols, using a mask, washing our hands frequently and all the other things that goes with keeping safe and keeping health, healthy and keeping well. So I want to remind us, you know, of those basic things. They may sound basic, but they are necessary for our well-being and that of our loved ones and our nations as well not just Dominica, but the entire region, the entire world that is plagued by this very, very trying um, situation, COVID-19. But tonight we're not talking COVID-19. We have a special guest with us tonight and he will share with us something about something that you think you know about that you need to know more about. And if you're from Portsmouth, then you will probably understand a little more when I say that we're going to talk about academics and uh, not just academics in terms of the, the word, or the, the practice of, of learning um, in the sort of, sort of formal sense of education, but the institution that goes by the name of academics with a big X at the end, School of Learning, SOL. So we will talk a little bit about that, but I just want to welcome all of you guys. I ask you to share the live, tell somebody else to come on board and join us tonight for we have a very fruitful discussion. If you're there, I see one person tonight is just Jose. Jose, are you alone? I don't want to think so. Jose is actually watching us here on YouTube. So I know that she's watching. But what about you guys on Facebook? I can see a few of you already uh, live. So let us know that you are there um, with us. All right. So 
Hi to you. Hope your family is all is all right as well. Um, this week we had some very good stuff happening in the town as well. I must tell you about Heather's events. And Heather is a and we as a matter of fact we featured Heather Heather Vidal um, probably on my second or third program live here, and she spoke about her business. Well, interestingly, just this week and yesterday, she formally opened um, another branch, you could say, or another aspect of her business where she has a stationary shop. But it's not just a stationary shop where she sells things like uh, for students who, can, who are going to school, but also she has a place where students can go ahead and surf the internet and probably even get printing services as well. So like a little cafe right there. It's right in the corner of the street close to the market. Um, the street which you could say intersects both um, Bay Street and yes, and that, that road going up towards the hospital. What's the name again? My mother knows it better than me. <laughs> Shame on me, I should probably know the name, but um, it's not it's not in my mind right now. But you know what I'm talking about, guys, um, if you're free from the area. All right. Thank you, Jose. It's good to know that you and your family are doing well over there in St. Vincent. And um, yeah, so anyway. Heather has set up her business and she is growing and we want to wish her all the best. So I tell you, I want to urge you to go out and check her out, see what she's offering. Uh, you will find something there for your student, for your child before school opens or before school reopens. Okay, so lots of things to go by. Anyway, no more time to waste. We have our brother who is already awaiting and we may have another person join him. If not, we are still going to have a very fruitful discussion tonight. So all of you know him, he goes by the name most times when people talk about him, they say, I'm going by He-Man. <laughs> so I'm going to bring him in. And you all know this gentleman. His name is Mr. He-Man Williams. Do they call you Sir He-Man? <laughs> yes, yeah, Sir He-Man, Mr. He-Man, Mr. Exactly. Williams. Yes. Exactly. That's how I know you. Before, <laughs> before I even knew you, I heard, I'm going by He-Man. Where are you going? I'm going by class at classes by He-Man. <laughs> So I always wanted to know he man until, of course, I got to know who is Mr. He-Man, who was a teacher initially, I think, at PSS. Am I correct? Yeah, well, I taught, I taught SD as well and, and St. Ah. John's Academy, yeah. Okay, wow. I didn't even know that, but I knew about PSS. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, so, I, that was the first school, actually. That's where yes, I started. PSS was the first school? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so folks, we have with us Mr. He-Man Williams, and I'm going to allow him to tell us a little bit about himself his background and then we will go into the the fact that he represents uh, an institution not it's not a you know it's not just an institution to me it's a distinguished institution in our town and that institution needs to be known and we need to promote and we need to zoom on that institution not just for people locally but also i'm sure people regionally and even internationally so yes so tell us a little bit about who is Mr. Heman Williams? Where are you from? Um, give us a little bit of background about you, please. Well, Heman Williams is a humble young man, I must say. Um, grew up in the, in the village of Bonn, a um, few miles, like two miles, two, three miles away from Portsmouth. Yes. That's about a seven minutes drive, 10 minutes drive, roughly. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a mechanic family. Um, in Bonn, we had very few activities, you know, as a young man growing up. So, you know, yeah. books was my friends. Right. And, uh, and then I, I came to Portsmouth at a um, young age, I would say, and I lived there for some time. I took time out for me to build my knowledge in, in what, I, what, I, what I liked, actually. Um, DC man Williams wanted to go beyond the clouds. He wanted to see what was what was beyond the the blue we see. Um, yeah. Astrology was always my my mm. my first my first choice. Um, DC man Williams was not from a rich family, so DC man Williams could not um, reach there because we did not have all the opportunities like um, people have now. You know where we could where yeah. we could actually go different areas in the world, it's, 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 it's a great opportunity now for individuals to do so. Mm -hmm. um, then I, I wanted to venture into planes, you know, I, I always like to fly okay. and having that, uh, that knowledge in physics and maths, you know, I always wanted to fly planes and so on. 
But then again, you always have your dreams, but sometimes maybe that is not what I was called for. So I become an educator. I started to teach at the Postman Secondary School. And the way I actually delivered maths as, as a subject, a lot of individuals hate this subject. I don't know why. It's a, love, a lovely subject. Actually, maths in my bones. You hate maths? <laughs> yes, I, I, have to, I, I have to do maths at university, and I can tell you, this was the most painful experience when I found out that I actually had to do maths at university. Okay. I, man, that was a <laughs> bad one for me. My maths teacher played all kinds of, my maths professor played all sorts of tricks on me there for me to pass maths. But I did, right? But I can tell you. But just to pass, but you, you, you don't like maths. Don't like it. <laughs> well, because of my love for it, um, yes. I could I could actually transfer my energy to individuals. You know, mm -hmm. try to teach with proof rather than just come and just give the content out. Right. Um, try to prove few things. You know, seeing is believing. Um, mm -hmm. Some people really don't have the faith in math, so just say right. okay, still say that and that's it. So I I always like to transfer the energy, and the way I did it. Um, some individuals actually decided to, you know, come high school dropouts, adults that needed education, etc. They they actually gravitated towards me, and and that was actually how I studied. I also love physics, and I got the push from from one special ministry official. At that time, she was the local registrar. Asked me to, you know, start start private physics, start private mm -hmm. sciences. Um, allow students that actually finished school and did not do well in physics and so on to, you know, have a chance again to do the sciences. Because, you know, when you finish reform, um, you cannot do any subject with labs. Yes. And, and I, I got the opportunity to actually do the sciences and I'm still the only institution doing the sciences in, 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 post, in Dominica, actually. So do the biology, chemistry, physics. And... Only and Yes, because we we presently we are registered as a as a school. We have our code of CXC, so we can actually allow private students. So people like you, if you want to come and do physics, you you will do all the labs just like the students in school. So we, right. we make that we give everybody the opportunity to to go into the exam room with a level playing field. No longer we're going to have um, private students or people that actually left school after a long time, high school dropouts, going to do a paper three and saying, okay, I, I, I wasn't prepared. And while the, some of the students actually go in the exam room with about 20%, you know, when they're doing very good at being you know, yeah, in the yeah. school. So now everybody going into the exam room with a labor playing field. So you have to do your SBAs, you get the opportunity to go in there with the, like the students and get the same marks as the students. Because that I feel is very important that that actually lift or boost the moral of somebody just going and sitting in an exam room knowing that the one sitting next to you or in the next class we and the one the same play, level play yeah. field. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So that I I I and that I I push for you know and finally we have the opportunity here for us to do that. And so also, also um. <laughs> We, we ventured into the advanced level, and that is that is the real story. I see, I see I see you transition into academics before you tell me about Heman, which is amazing. Yeah, but all, all those things, all those things is, is I know it's why, part of you, why you heard about Heman before, yes, yes. before when everybody spoke about I'm going to to, to I go in by Heman rather than let's say I'm going to school. Right. They're going by Heman. So all that is part and parcel of, of, of who Heman is. So right. I build my reputation with that whole education thing. Especially and, in the sciences, maths, physics, biology. Yes. Okay. And then I, I expanded and so on. But that this Heman is just a simple Heman, you know. This Heman is home, school, you know, go to service. And yeah. that is that is Heman. Simple, oh, sure, yes. Yeah. I, so, you, I know that you started in a little building by Miss Vanya and them. You rented that, that place for a while. Is yes. that where you really started, or there was another place and then you moved to there? No, that's not where I started. Not really. Um, I actually started 
um, in at SD, you know, right. um, Miss Maglo, the principal at the time. Mm -hmm. She gave me the opportunity to have few classes there. So at that time, I, I only did maths. I, I would have a lot of individuals coming from different areas in the, in the district. We had individuals coming from Marigot. Um, yeah. We had people from Beyonce, Wesley. A lot of people coming down, you know, just hearing about the human, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was not academics at the time. So that's why it actually started. And, and it was in the afternoons. So I would maybe finish by 5.30, you know, give the kids back to the principal. And yeah. that is where the whole academics, the whole teaching started. Yeah. Right. So what caused the transition from the SDA school to the building by Miss Vanier area? Well, I was I was driven in a way to assist um, people that that needed education, especially adults, and uh, high school dropouts. That was that was a pain. I, yeah. We, we may not have the statistics of, mm -hmm. of the rate at which students drop out from high school yeah. back in the time when I think um, the, the then representative of Wesley did some, some research. And, but I know that I saw a lot of high school dropouts come to academics. And what gives me pleasure is, is that when they came in, they left with some form of education. And that was the drive. So the reason we really started academics was just to have the high school dropouts and and um, adults who needed education, and also students for reinforcements. You know, they would always come yeah. and say, "Sir, I would, I would like to know um, some maths exams coming up, and I want to I want to make sure I pass." You know, so that was how we really started. That was that was the the stool. Yeah. We, we we had to actually move forward yeah. all right so yes yeah, so then all of a sudden we're hearing that there is this school called academics in the town mm -hmm. and of course curiosity like mine would you know get a get, get aroused and i wanted to know a little bit more okay academics um who is behind it and then i found out of course it's mr heman again so he has transitioned and grown from SDA school to by Ms. Vanya and then into a full-blown institution and I, I would think that that is your your total commitment because as you said you taught at other schools right. and now you have transitioned into your creating your own institution I say your because I mean you're the man behind it it's your right. I call it your brainchild it's your brainchild <laughs> right. <laughs> right so um Tell us a little bit, why the name Academics School of Learning? That's one with a big X at the end, but guys, by the way. Um, why that name? And how, how did you go about, you know, getting to be a full-blown institution, educational institution in the town? Well, it's a long story, you know. Um, yeah. Very so long story. <laughs> yeah. So should I summarize it or just give you some of the story? You can, you can, you can give us the main, the main juicy part. Yes. Okay then. Well, academic. You can give us the trying parts too, you know. But yeah, that's we're, what I mean. <laughs> we're thinking about uh, my sister and I. We, we, we like twins. We, we, we some years apart, but we, okay. we like twins. So we're thinking about what name should we give give a school? Um, I. I was like Williams Academy, you know, all kind of names come up. And then yeah. academics just just come. It was academics the learning center back then. Okay. So we were not like registered as a school. We right. we were academics the learning center. We started with three subjects. That was maths, accounts, and English. And okay. then we ventured into biology and HSB because nurses wanted to come in. And then every year, every time I look back, I want to make sure that I'm better than the previous year. So I, I started to improve. And then after three years, yeah, three years, yeah, we had 10 subjects, doing 10 subjects. Because a lot of individuals, high school dropouts especially, wanted to do so many subjects, at least for them to get a job. So yeah. I say, let me try to improve it so I could have a few classes in the morning, a few classes in the afternoon, you know, you have to pay rent and so on. So you want to yeah. increase the numbers, etc. And then the point where we had the the most students, here comes Mamaria coming yes. and 
taking out the roof of the building. Um, I was kind of dejected, obviously. The whole entire country was devastated. Yeah. But I, individuals, while everybody was broken, because the country is still open, and individuals are asking me, sir, sir, when, when are we going to start back? We, we're going to have CFT. So we got the opportunity to go into um, St. John's School. You know, Miss Peter God, God gave me um, two classes, give me the opportunity to have two classes. At that time, we had an enrollment of about 110 students. And it, it wow. was, it, wow. you, you were thinking of either giving back individuals the monies because yeah. we, we, the country was totally devastated. Mm -hmm. And we got the opportunity to get into two classrooms. Now we could actually house um, these students because we really did not have space when mm -hmm. Every time the hurricane hit, because it was yeah. early September there, um, in September when we were starting. And then while at this school, I I keep thinking about that we cannot just go back to CSEC, like secondary education. Mm -hmm. So my team, you know, myself, um, my sister, that is Giselle Williams Vashi. Okay. Um, and Charlene Christopher, you know Charlene Christopher well. She's Charlene, Charlene Christopher from Lago. Okay, yes, um, yes, 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 yes. She's okay. she's with academics for a mm. long time. Okay. After this year, she will be making a decade with us. You know, Amazing. that's a real long time. Yeah, and yeah. she's 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 part of us. You understand? Mm -hmm. she's like my sister is part of us. Okay, and. We sat down and I'm saying, okay, we need to introduce something that we we can continue our program into. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I thought about the Cambridge A-level and uh, I also thought about KIP, you know, yeah. you know, having having the Caribbean, the standard for tertiary education in the Caribbean is KIP. Mm -hmm. uh, the entire Caribbean is doing it. I'm from Belize, Jamaica, all the way down, just, just call it Antigua, even... Tutula, everywhere, Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Trinidad, Guyana, mm -hmm. every country in that in, in the Caribbean is doing Cape. So we are saying that the top students in the Caribbean is doing Cape, but yet still in our country, um, in the Dominica State College, yeah. they're not doing Cape. So I started to do a little research and the Cambridge A-level was way too expensive for us to actually introduce mm -hmm. because the Cambridge A-level was $265 for one subject. And mm -hmm. I spoke to a few ministry individuals and, and that mm, they told me, why don't you just, just work with Cape? It's equivalent right. to the Cambridge A-level. Mm -hmm. um, I read up on the NAIRC where they said that it is on par with the A-level. The Caribbean states were actually removing the Cambridge A level to introduce KIP. So um, we said, okay, we're going to do KIP. As mm -hmm. to how many subjects, yes. we were battling at it. So having a lot of subjects, that is the technical, building, engineering, digital media, now we've been introducing animation, game design, and we are the only school in the small island chain that actually doing these courses. Amazing. Then yeah. we, we said we are mixing it up. You know, we're mixing up CSEC and mm -hmm. KIP. Mm -hmm. And there's where the MICS yeah. changed to MIX because we said oh. we, we're mixing Mi up. Yeah. <laughs> we're mixing it up and then my sister came up with this brilliant idea that we need to show some form of praise you know yes and you can see the man hand is yeah. wide open with a yeah. smile and yeah. you could see his legs open and so on yeah. and then we get somebody to design this man for us Quite with nice. a with a, a gong showing yeah. that he's graduating he's happy yeah. and uh, is showing some form of praise. So that is how the X actually come about. Like that is how we get the mix, academic mix, mm -hmm. so we mix mm -hmm. up these two, these two programs. 
and all the technical science and all this kind of thing. So that is how yes. academics came in. come about. I'm and happy to know because, that picture. I have that picture. Huh? <laughs> and then because now we registered as a school, yeah. then we had to, you know, remove the center, the learning center, and then right. we have a school of school. learning. Yes, so that is how academic school of learning come about. So at least maybe that is a good enough story for you to see how we actually yes. gradually improve. Yes, I think it is. It gives a picture of the journey, certainly, that you started merely as just a class. Then, of course, you gravitated and became a center and mm. now a school. And clearly, there is a transition. There is growth as well when we look at the process that you have shared. And, and you said something earlier that you started introducing some subjects because people like nurses and people who wanted to pursue nursing came to your school and wanted the opportunity. And then people came all the way from the Northeast and other parts of the island right. to, your, to your, it was a center then. And then of course right. to the school. So it's, it's amazing how you have been able to see the need and seek to meet the need of your clientele. And Shelvin, I would say your precious, desire to be that astronaut which i think and i hope that maybe you're still somewhere <laughs> when eventually pursue it who knows but give it back to your community in that way i think it's amazing what you what you all are doing already right but maybe astronaut i saw nasa letting go so many astronauts Here so maybe maybe i will stick to teaching <laughs> okay, okay. I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy um, sharing my knowledge with people. That's right. for sure. So, of course, I, I don't think you would have gone into so deeply if you did not enjoy what um doing what you're doing. Of course, right. right. Yeah, and, and of course, your sister and you mentioned Charlene, that's part of the full team. Can you tell us a little bit about the makeup of the institution in terms of um uh, how many how many teachers you probably have um. What is the enrollment like? You know, that sort of picture. I mean, people might be hearing about it. You said post Maria, you had about a hundred and something people who had already signed up for school. Now that you have you are a full blown institution, what does it look like? Well, presently it's the CAP program that we're we're doing. Um we we are covering about 48 advanced level courses, and that's a lot of advanced level courses. Yeah. So we would have individuals and register more as a tertiary institution. Eh? Right. So we would have individuals um, coming for like a two year program because mm -hmm. you come out from secondary school and you're coming into the college uh, for the two year program. Yeah. So the enrollment for this one uh, last year, we, we had. 50, 55 last year, um, a good number. Mm -hmm. And then for the CSEC, we had uh, the students come in more for reinforcement and also the same adults, high school dropout. They would come in the afternoon, but, but for the college section, they would come yeah. like in the morning okay. from eight to three and then from three go down to seven o'clock. Then the CSEC would be coming right, for secondary education. Okay. So it's two schools in one, actually. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing about 14 CSEC courses. So 48 plus 14 is a, is a big, big number. That is 62 courses. Yeah. yeah. And uh, our, our enrollment for the CSEC, because some come for, enroll, for reinforcement, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. they would start, sometimes they would not complete the course, because some of them would feel like, okay, I'm confident enough to go and do the exam after let's say seven months or yes, after six yes. months, etc. Right. So these numbers would be fluctuating, I would say. So we would have about, about let's say 100 CSEC students, let's say 80 to 100 CSEC students, because right. it fluctuate among them by this number. Okay. But the CAP would be what we will really need to mm -hmm. drive this school forward. Right. But this year we, we're improving mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. Because we're introducing uh, online learning. Um, we have a platform that, you know, I feel that we we are top in the country. Um, right. With the platform that we have to do online learning. And we have students from Ozo, we have students from Sufri, we have students from Marigot, who are registering now. 
I just learned of a student who was at another institution and um, she decided to come down to Portsmouth because um, she could not get some of her subjects or the instructions uh, the last time during the COVID time. Mm -hmm. and, and she is going to be doing exams probably within the next year. So she wants to, I think she's attending your school. She just registered. And there right. might be a few more like her, as you mentioned. Right. There, there are few, there are few in this situation, and you know that that bring a little extra motivation. You know, this smile yeah. that are finally yeah. we yeah. could get individuals from outside of Portsmouth, you know, yeah. to come to Portsmouth, and mm -hmm. that is what I, I, I always try, you know, to see yes. if if we can get some form of mobility in Portsmouth. But having having the COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. We have to really think about, you know, having the courses online, online yeah. but not just, it's not distance learning. So distance mm -hmm. learning and online learning is two different things. That's you know, right. just for a teacher to take some notes and put it on a platform or side in your note, that is distance learning. You need a lot of discipline for you to actually mm -hmm. get students to learn when you just send papers for them to read or send mm -hmm. book chapters for them to read. But what we'll be doing, we'll yeah. have the pre-recorded videos of the teachers themselves, okay. you know, to have content and concepts teaching. And mm -hmm. then you'd have the live lectures where you would have interactive, uh, an interactive class. Right. And then we'll provide the resource materials for the students online. So we'll prepare the work, we'll prepare the notes, we'll prepare what the students need, we'll give them past papers, we'll do everything that a student would need. Because yes. not, not only the students will have to come from um, different areas and we'll have to provide shuttle for them if in case they come from far every day. Yeah. But, you know, it's tough for a student to maybe come from, let's say, Sufria and come all the way down to Portsmouth yeah. and have to have bus from Sufria to Ruzu, Ruzu to Portsmouth. You know, it's still going and, and have to move with, with different with, people. Especially with COVID, right? Yeah, to have to take transportation. It's it's more risky now. That's so right. that's, that's great that your school is, you, you guys are thinking in advance, you know, you're very advancing your in your approach towards education in that way so yeah but not, not only that you know we are also targeting the rest of the caribbean um okay. Okay. we we we're not going full blown with the with the 48 courses right um but all of them will be available online because there are some subjects that need moderation right and i spoke to the local registrar and the local registrar told me that you know, students can do SBA from St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Grenada, Barbados, anywhere in the territory. And mm -hmm. we'll just liaise with the local registrars of that country. Right. And because it's e-submission, then we can actually have the SBA done under our code in Dominica. And then we can have the students go into a center in their respective countries. Okay. So we have a few students from Grenada that are actually registered. Great. We have students from Guyana that are actually registered. All right. um, there are about two students from Belize that registered. So <laughs> we, that is just a start of something yes. big, you know. Yes. It, yes. It, I, I, I'm happy. I, would mm -hmm. say. I maybe don't know how to show the happiness too much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because but I'm happy that we can make progress and even have an impact in the rest of the Caribbean. But yeah. the results, the results going to show because mm -hmm. I think the day for last year we had 88% pass. That was over the Caribbean pass rate. That's and great. this year we will be better than 88%. I just waiting for the results to come out so I'll post yeah. it for everybody to see and that. Success. Success. <laughs> yes, you have to you have to show the successes that people know this is not just a school but yeah. we are, you're actually achieving what it, what the students come to achieve. You know, yeah. you have to that is your testament. That's your testimony. So that other people can say, hey, I want my student or I want my son, my daughter to attend this right. institution. Right. So I'm happy to hear about the connection with the regional, international, and even the international, you could say, because I mean, Belize is not, well, it's uh, kind of current, but you know, you know what I mean, compared yes. to like people <laughs> within our island chain. So it's, it's good. It's great. And I'm hoping that more people can actually buy into um, attending academics. How do you market your school? Do you, I know you have a website online 
Um, I know a lot of more people tell people, but do you have a marketing strategy that you actually use, especially for outside of Dominica? Well, the marketing, you know, marketing is a lot of money, right? Yes, definitely. Marketing is a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, we have, we may have the marketing strategy, but um, the fundings, the fundings is going to give us a little, you know, a little, a little difficulty to actually get everything out yeah. there. But yeah. what you do, um, there is this Facebook, you know, I'm not, I'm not all into the Facebook, Facebook, but I keep learning different things and how you can actually reach out to individuals. Mm -hmm. And you can boost um, your advertisement on Facebook. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, everybody keep, you know, always on a phone, some device is looking at something on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if we post it in Dominica, let's say from the age range between 14 to 65, then we can track it online and, yeah. and we can see what age group that actually look at it, what, what um, from which parish they look at it. Mm -hmm. And that way we pay Facebook for that. Mm -hmm. um, and that is how we actually get the information all over Dominica. Then individuals would call and then we would give the advice, we would give directives, we would give directions. Yeah. You know? And we also did that for the Caribbean. So we, we boost throughout the Caribbean. Obviously, it's more individuals we have to meet. Yes. So it's more money that we have to give Mr. Thank Zuckerberg. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we use this strategy to actually reach out to to the to the individuals. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but I feel I feel it 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 worked it worked well enough. But not everybody had on Facebook, obviously. True. True. And we we just trying to see how we can use different social medias, different um, media outlets. Uh, hopefully, we. will try to get on the radio for us to speak about a few things. Yeah. But not everybody listens to the radio, but just to get out to different different individuals. I think, I think the radio is definitely still very uh, productive, you could say. Yes. A lot of Dominicans listen to the radio, various radio stations. If you can get a Simo, um, or they call it a Simo cast, or, or you have several, um, several of the, the radio stations in one, uh, well, carrying one broadcast at the same time, and you have a discussion about your school and you have tested you have young people giving reviews or students past students giving reviews of the school both written and verbal i think that's another way that um, you 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 all can go because what my point in asking this question is the fact that you have a very good product here um a very good service and a product that you offer to the general public that you offer to the community and not just the community but the country and the region and more people need to know about it and buy into it because um, I know the state college is free, so some people might say, well, college is free to come to academics, I have to pay, so I'll go to the state college. But then there is also the cost of, especially the locals, meaning those within the town um, and close proximity to the town, there is also the cost um, issue as far as transportation. So, you know, the give and take. So I, I suppose what I'm saying is it's important for people to know more about what academics is offering, how you offer what you what you offer and how much they can buy into it as well. But as you, as you made mention about, about college being free, yeah. um, mm -hmm. college is not really free, you know. I, the tuition is free, you know, the tuition is free. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. The summer's not free because you're not, the, the, the government will not pay for you doing summer classes right. in case you fail a course if you're going and do it in the summer, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's not like free, free. I, I don't know the full figures of how, how much a credit was, but I think it was $25. And students would have to do, you know, a lot of credits, you multiply that and you get the, the figures. So obviously tuition is out of it. But you have to pay for the urban fees. Yeah. You have to pay for insurance. You have to pay for maintenance. You have to pay, you have, you have fees that you have to pay for. Right. Obviously exam fees, you have to pay for that. And if you're doing a level, which is something that you you would be advised to do as the top students. You have to pay about let's say two hundred plus dollars just to do the class, and that right. class is later in the night. And then you have to pay two hundred and sixty-five dollars for you to do the exam, because that is the cost of the exam. And not all the subjects that is that will do A levels. 
Right. And so it is not like free, free. And as you talk about the the transportation, um, for people in our region, in, in our district, $5 for a student to go up to Roseau, um, one fifty to go up on the on the on the in the college. When you look at all those things, that is like thirteen dollars for you to pay every day. And yeah. food, let's say seven dollars, ten dollars. Yeah. It's like thirty dollars a day. You're talking like one fifty a week. You're talking like six hundred dollars a month. And just think of if you come to academics, you mm. only paying two hundred and seventy dollars. I mean, which one is 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 best? You're saying right. you're right. paying like three hundred and thirty dollars less mm -hmm. if you come to academics, and you'd be doing a an associate degree that is accredited in all fifty four Commonwealth countries and articulated in the universities in America, and you would be paying three hundred and thirty dollars less yes. right. huh? well just said. to come to academics. I mean, people have to sit down and look at all those things. So I remember putting the numbers to together for a student. Yeah, I'm and to put it down for, for everybody to hear. Yeah, yeah I'm, that, I mean, that is what I, I wish I could discuss that with everybody individually. Yeah. Because if you go college for three and a half months, mm -hmm. then you have to pay $2,100. And then you have to go for four semesters. That is $8,400. If you come to academics for two years, the cost you're going to pay if I if I I you didn't reach the requirements for a scholarship, and I do give students scholarships because I have to give back to yeah. the community, you'd be paying six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for two years, while you'll be paying bus and eating food in Roseau for eight thousand four hundred dollars. Even we we actually remove the fees that for Auburn and so on. If we have to just say, okay, we don't know the fees, so let's just say it's $200 a month. Yeah. Or $200 every semester. Add $800 to that $8,400. And if you have to do A-levels, keep adding money to that. You'll end up paying about $11,000 just to go to college for Thank two you. years. And then that is about $4,000 to $5,000 more than if you come to academics. So the notion that academics is a private school and you have to spend right. money for that but right. you'll be walking to come to school and think about the students that come out Penville. think about the students that come out Capuchin. Mm. think about the students that are going to be coming out from Wesley and Woodford Hill that would be paying four dollars to reach to Postmouth mm -hmm. and then five dollars to go up some individuals come to me and say so we'll be paying twenty dollars a day for transportation and my parents don't have money to give us for food, so we have to stay in Ozo hungry. Okay, let me let me. <laughs> Someone is giving you some feedback there from the state college that you might want to read. And what she, we know she's she's um. Everybody knows her, Miss James. Uh, she she works at the state college as well as. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I I welcome that. So good information. 130 per semester. So let's say we we remove mental yeah. and please. So that is a good thing. Right. So let's say 130 per semester. So the 200 maybe was just 70 dollars more. Remember, I'm not on the board in college. I'm, right, just, right, I'm right. just throwing it up, but, right? But I guess it's so important if it's 130 dollars, then it's still going to add numbers to it. But yeah, if you yeah. note something, I don't, yeah. I don't have a campus, right? Right. But right. I you still know. want individuals to understand. It is mm -hmm. not like um a private school and you just come in to just send money in i will we we definitely would like to maybe have a place that could possibly hold a thousand students but right. we 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 can't handle a thousand students here right. yeah. but it is not right for you to just think that you know to go by academics is which people yeah. school yeah. it is just a key program that we try to offer because the rest of the caribbean is offering it and can that is uh, that appears to be the standard of education in the Caribbean. Can you, can you explain to people a little bit about CAPE? I mean, we grew up here in O levels, A levels, and then there is this CAPE that came up. You know, what is okay. CAPE? Can you give people a little bit? Because maybe some people are not sure, you know, the what is the necessity of CAPE? What is CAPE? You know, can you give a little clarity to folks about that, please? Okay. Um, before we 
we used to do the Cambridge O level. Um, right. We would call it GCE O level. Right. And that was, you know, comparable to our CXC, CSEC, you know, right. now. Right. Then we had the GCE A level, that was the Cambridge A level, and then City and Gales, that was from Britain, right? It was the British examination. Yeah. And the Cape now, because, you know, the, the GCE O level in Barbados, I think Monstrat recently um, started the Cape program well not doing the O level I don't want to say recently started the Cape because Cape is around for a long time. And the the O level in the car the GC O level in the Caribbean were, were totally wiped aside because CXC took over, right? Yeah. So CXC C SEC was the the secondary education that we'll do. I mean back in your time it yeah. was Cambridge GCE um, yeah. GCE and then CXC. So yeah. people had a choice, right? Yeah. When I went to college, the O level, the A level was part of our program. So we we'll do the, the the associate degree, you know, was there, but the A level, you had to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So while I would focus on the the maths and the, the physics and the advanced writing and the and the um the accounts and all those other little subjects that I had to do as electives, all, all was good, but I had to do the A level, right? But now the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination right. is now the, the, the substitute for that A level. Okay. Um, it is on par with the A level. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the Caribbean, that is Barbados, Trinidad, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, all of them did A-level before, the Cambridge A-level and City and Gales. Mm -hmm. And now the KIP is the substitute for it. So if we look at the, the, um, the Commonwealth Accreditation um, of the KIP program, it is actually mandated by 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 CARICOM as as basically the standard for the tertiary education. We're not saying that Dominica State College is not doing something good. I mean come on, we went to Dominica State College. We can't talk down on our country right, right. just because of a KIP program, right? Mm -hmm. But the KIP program, it is accredited in all Commonwealth countries. We're talking about um, Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, India, South Africa, the United Kingdom, and our students, Canada, our students would actually have an opportunity to go in any university of, our, of, of their choice. Yes. You yes. see? Right. Now, while, while we may not be doing the, the A-level in all subjects in the college, and, and obviously it comes at a cost, and maybe Cape haven't got psychology, so Miss, Miss James, Cape haven't got psychology, but psychology is part of the program in college, and, and we, need, we need psychologists around. You need to, yes. to prepare yes. them for, for that field. But while Cape haven't got that, that um, psychology course, Mm -hmm. The law cost, for example, if you have to go to UWE, yeah. and you will exempt you um, from at least one year, one year out of out of the, the four years yeah. when you do the CAPE program. So I have a lawyer teaching the CAPE law, you know, and she said that she was at a disadvantage, you know, when she went out there to the rest yeah. of the Caribbean students because mm -hmm. they actually had prerequisite of law. Right. as they are coming into coming into UE. So doing the Cape law, the Caribbean law, it gave them a extra boost. You know, the right. same thing I spoke to somebody with tourism. He said everybody came into, and that was like, how much is, I don't want to, between, let me give a range, between 13 to 15 years ago, he told me that a guy went to Trinidad and, and everybody came in with an extra drive on me because I had to catch up. Yeah. And it was a disadvantage for me because all of them did keep tourism. You know? So right now, academics is creating or is bre breaching that gap 
that gap that right. exists. So what we do, we mm -hmm. just offer in the kit program. Right. Right. So at least our students, when we, when they when they go out, then they would have knowledge in law um, that could actually press them forward. Not saying that other students can't have knowledge, mm -hmm. but at least they would do a recognized examination that the college boards or university boards can look at in order for them to to actually exempt those students. Look at for meteorology. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people believe, okay, you need geography for you to go and do meteorology, you understand? Yeah. But when I look at the criteria for that meteorology, for the school in Barbados, it is maths and physics. <laughs> and they're asking for GCE, A-level, and the KIP. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So you need to do a recognized examination. And that is a plus. It is right. not me trying to um, you know, sell something that I'm just doing. I'm just giving the facts out there. Because well, that is happy. what we can go on the website and we can see all those things. We're happy so, to get the facts for sure. Right. right. So it have a lot of individuals, a lot of individuals, especially you, for example. There's a good friend that I have, a student, I would say. And mm -hmm. he wanted to do actuary. And he, he went to study mathematics and economics and they took his economics at ue they took his economics mm -hmm. credits mm -hmm. you know and they did not take his maths credits and he's saying so but i should just do the cap exam man or i should do a level but i told him i advise you to do a level but it was too expensive for him mm -hmm. so instead of you doing the associate degree, the local associate degree, and a level, which are two separate things. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Then if you do the KIP, a compilation of the KIP advanced level courses would actually give you the same associate degree in the name of the subject that you want to do. So let's say, for example, an associate degree in building, in, build, in industrial technology, right. you're getting certificates a-level certificates in building engineering unit one, building engineering unit two, electrical and electronic engineering unit one, electrical engineering unit two, just like the AS and so the A2, TVET, just it like... like sounds like TVET and... and but <laughs> you so you you see this structure. Competencies at the various levels, I suppose. Yeah. Right. But it's just me trying to, you know, sensitize the people about the program. You know? Well, I'm happy. I'm happy that um, academics has has looked at bringing that down to the people um, level, where people can actually access it. It's in close range, you know, and you are doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Have you had a Have you had a graduation over the past time that you've well, been? Well, because of COVID, we 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 could not graduate the students mm -hmm. in July. Right. As, we, as we planned, because a lot of them wanted to go and study. They have actually applied to different universities of their choice. Interesting okay. enough, we yeah. had Florida State of Florida Institute of Technology accepting a lot of them and telling them, accepting two of them and telling them, um, just come in with your KIP um, results and you'll be exempted. You'll you have working credits, you know. And I'm like, I told them, don't apply to any university. Try the university of your choice. Yes. Look at yes. them, look yes. well, and see that, yes, KIP is accepted there, but work hard so that you can get the best grades, That's so that it. you can be like an asset to this school. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so many different universities, students that want to do ACC, um, yeah. applying to schools in England with the KIP, and they accept the KIP. Wow. You know? So just having, just having, not having the A level, the Cambridge A level, and having the KIP as a substitute is an advantage for some of them to go in some universities. So how many? How many but the graduation, the graduation will be on October nine. Okay. Um, because of COVID, it will be on October nine. Right. Um, this would be a historical, a historical moment for Portsmouth. That's well, yes, sure. that's why I'm asking because I, I would like to see that. I would like to witness that. You, I mean, you will be there. You'll be there as long as God give us life. You'll be there. God. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, of course. Yes. Um, how many? How many people? How many graduates will you be having? Well, yeah. um, while it's a happy time, mm -hmm. um, we have 25 graduating now, yeah. and unfortunately, um, I, I will be strong enough, I'm sure, that one of them died, and that is the, yes. that is the hardest thing. 
Um, and he even had to, to receive an award in, mm -hmm. in computer science, the yeah. second unit. Yes. Because he was he was really dedicated. That is your Libra. Yes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. That that Sorry that shake us up. Yeah. Um, we we're more like a family in this school. You know, mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody. Everybody, yeah. you know, link up. He was always the first to come in. You know, and then unfortunately he he passed away. So yeah. it's a happy time for the graduation, but it's like it's one of one of us one of us missing so, so i think you have, you have an empty chair just for you for it for yuri yeah sure mm -hmm. i i i know his picture will be on it for sure yeah mm -hmm. i wish he would be sitting there yes you no know? mm -hmm. i wish he was was sitting there but that is maybe one of the dumb thing of being an educator building bonds with students yeah, and yeah. then unfortunately the after he finished his last exam, mm -hmm. that was the Thursday afternoon. We sat there for a long time, but Monday morning, I get in a call. And he had to come down to check us, you know, for us to work on a few things because yeah. he had his business all organized. But Monday he died. And that, mm -hmm. was, that, was, that was very sad. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, certainly. So let me extend my condolences, of course, to the school for having lost a very good student. I... I I viewed the, I, I was not able to attend, but I did view the funeral and um, I heard some of the commendations, you know, and I saw some of his, his fellow students, of course, and how they were very torn um, by the loss of such a wonderful student and friend. So I extend my condolences, of course, to academics and also to his family, um, those over there in Anzimay and so on, that area, um, who lost such a wonderful young man from, from all, all reports. Father Herman Chaplis is on there, and he um he did the yeah. funeral. I remember he did the funeral, and he has been extending commendations to to the academics for the work that you all are doing yeah. as well. So a number of people are there. Some folks giving a thumbs up, like Lisa, um, Thomas, and of course Miss James. She did say that you all are doing a good job, and we are proud of you all. I mean, let's let's be fair and square. Academics being, I call it homegrown. I think yeah. it was born in Portsmouth, and it is, you know, a man from born, you're from Bossy too, you know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's where we, we would grow up, you know, I mean. That's it. With garage, you have to come Portsmouth to, to buy things right. associated with people, you know. Right. Yes. So so it is truly a gift, not just to us, but to the, the island, to the region. And for a young man like you, you can step up and take a bold, you know, bold step, and create such an initiative that can change lives and that is changing lives. One of the things I I am I am taught by is also I know that you have and again maybe the location right now of academics is a challenge, I'm sure, um, for you. But I must say that I know of one student with a physical disability or challenge, you could say physically challenged um student that you have, and um, she is attending academics and diligently, you know, and I'm very proud of her. You know, Judy, very proud of Judy. And okay. I don't know if you have other such students, but I do know of her. And I want to also commend academics for accommodating her, you know, um, in her situation as well. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's a struggle to get uh, up this step. Yeah. But she, she actually, she tries a lot. She, she so worked hard to get up yeah. there. She's very yeah. determined, mm -hmm. you know, but... Yeah. But we, we, we try to, we wish we could work with everybody. Because to get her up on a bus every day, up and down roads, I think it would be a, a bigger oh, yeah. challenge. Oh, yeah, I um, think so, too. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Certainly. And, and she's a, a well-driven, self-driven young lady. And mm -hmm. I, I really see greatness. I know that she wants to be a lawyer. So I yes. suppose she's doing she's, um, law. She's doing law, yes. Here we go. <laughs> well, she wanted to be a content as well, but... <laughs> Okay. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of work to maybe yes. do two and three majors. Yeah. You know? But if you determine enough, if the students feel, I, I, right. I usually give the advice, mm -hmm. and we'll have our team sitting, you know, asking questions, trying right. to find out what is your career choice, etc. Yes. But if if I feel that maybe law is your preferred um, preferred career choice, career right. path, right. and maybe accounting is maybe the the second one, you're not sure, then right. I could maybe let accounts be the elective. 
rather than let you do two majors because it would be like a lot of work to do yeah. law and yeah. accounting you know so. right well you are there to advise them and i think you're doing a fabulous job you you are very versed on what is expected and i think you know your students you see their strengths and their abilities and i know that you push them too let them you let them recognize that they can actually do better than they oh, think sure. can, you know sure so, sure yeah and um, the fact I, that you can you can you can work with them like it's your own family you understand you can call them you can you can give them advice you can laugh with them but you can also get tough with them as well mm -hmm. and they will take they'll take um take note as, at what you're saying etc right, right. um that is the that is a good thing about it it's like we haven't got the the groups that are just come the extra rude you know we don't want yeah. to do everything in the class no we try to coach them how what we expect what you should do because that is maybe the best thing to to have in a school for you to maintain class class classroom um, class management etc okay let me ask you something though do you think that you get it you are getting the necessary support as an institution maybe from um i don't know i mean where the support should be coming from is there would you say that as as a young institution in the community and um, that you are getting the kind of support that is necessary well no i'm not getting the support actually i started i started this program you from from the beginning of the show yeah. i told you i started um where i started etc mm -hmm. i actually started with the monies i made from the sda school yeah and from there we improved and improved and improved i thank god i'm not i'm not I did not owe as much people um, before, and I could actually clear some debt. But mm -hmm. it, was, it actually built pressure on me um, because I thought at the time two secondary schools, yes. I could make additional income and I could cover up something. So I was working to build academics because I did not have all the responsibilities. I was not married at the time, you know. So yeah. at least I could just stay in a little apartment and, you know. Whether I have light or no light, I would still try, no electricity, I would still try yeah. to see if I could maybe pay that one staff. And that was Charlene at the time. Yes, I would yes. try to pay her, you know, just to make sure we keep it going, keep it mm -hmm. going. And because of the passion of what you do, you know, yeah. you keep going forward. But as to assistance, um, is from my home, you know, I, I could actually get some funding, mortgage, you know, to get this school going. You mm -hmm. could see at the back of me, I have a smart board there. Those, those yes. cost a lot of money. I, can I, choose, I choose them because um, it's not that I, I knew that we were going into a situation where we need to do online learning, yeah. but we need to have a change of the way we deliver content. True. So if a student, I saw CXC would be bringing like 3D diagrams and they wanted to do online learning. Mm -hmm. online online testing and on some of the 3d diagrams if a student is seeing some 3d shape yeah how would they actually label or even understand that 3d shape if all the time on the books they are drawing 2d understand if they draw in two-dimensional mm -hmm. so i'm thinking like okay i feel it's best if we could play a video and maybe we could write on the video you know I'm, i saw all those things on television you know right. cnn seeing those things happening and i went to research and i bought these boards and just to take out one of these boards in a store is this one especially it's five thousand us dollars and one thousand us dollars just for insurance across the states and then when it reached to the custom mm -hmm. it's like young people should not have a business wow because it's a wow. lot of money so even if you get little duty free yeah um that was just a shade of the money that you had to pay so i had to pay maybe almost twenty thousand twenty thousand plus just to remove televisions white smart boards i have three of them yeah um desks well not desks chairs actually um i could source the desk from Dominica, so the chairs had to order them, and about 20 computers, because I had to buy fast enough computers yeah, yeah. for me to do AutoCAD, mm -hmm. um, 
the digital media softwares and the fact that we introduced um, animation and game design, right. then we had to get programs for gaming, which is, it have a very wide market. So I wanted to do things yeah. that could actually get our Dominican brains working mm -hmm. because Dominica have a lot of potential. We have a lot of talent in Dominica, you know. Yes, but I if you want to just do, let's say, digital media, you have to go over C for you to do it. Because mm -hmm. people just feel I can just go and do IT and that would be good enough for digital media. But IT is IT, computer science is computer science, digital right. media is digital media, and also animation game design is, is totally different from all, all of them. Mm -hmm. And yet still we have people talented enough to do them. So I was advised to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the local registrar could actually get, you know, a few students that came to her to do it. Right. to come to academics. So that is how we actually would get um, the group, you know, so that we could actually build this course. We have people in Postmore with degree in animation game design. Excellent, excellent. You know? And yet still, <laughs> we, we need to utilize everybody around Portsmouth because we have the talent here. We have everybody here. We don't have to be going Rosu for everything. True. But still for all, if we have to go to Rosa to get the best individual to do the course, yeah. I still feel that we should do it. So we had, you know, the first person to do building engineering. He was from Rosa, you understand? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get to have that passion, you know, right. in Postmod still, just to have people to come and educate the people in the in the district, you know, on the different courses, etc. Well, I'm, but I'm it, it, it's a lot of, of money to, to spend to get yes. these computer screens, desks, chairs, you know, all those things. Yeah, so so I hope the pause that be, I hope the message will get to them and and so that you know more support can come to such an such such an institution. I mean, you are making a difference and you are creating opportunities that other schools are not even creating. You are very advanced, and I, I, I don't see why um the support should not be as it ought to be so i'm hoping that whoever is hearing and viewing you know and they can share the message and spread the word because next time you go to the customs for example maybe that's one area that you, you can start where you can get the kind of support that you need in order to to build the school but i, I wanted to ask you too i mean i know that right now you're not in your own personal space you are renting a building um what any plans for for your building your own institution your own campus as you you mentioned earlier i mean any plans for that well that is big dreams i i wish one day obviously if you're not thinking yeah. about um yeah. having your own um building own campus own own maybe own school just in a separate area you know somewhere yeah. that is quiet where you could actually do even more courses because one thing i always think about i always think about um the cvqs yeah because there are a lot of individuals that maybe want to do the the construction and be certified in it you know right um right. even baking bread i i look at the courses and i'm saying okay um i feel it it looks it looks okay you know um even electrical installation mm -hmm. you know that is something that is you know young people want to come into it. But right. if somebody come into academics now, then I have to tell you, I think it is best that you do building engineering because you learn how to build, yeah. you learn how to do structural design, you learn how to design um, the, the house itself, the architectural design in the course also have electrical installation and plumbing installation. You also learn project management, all those things in that one course. But just to do, let's say, electrical installation, mm -hmm. um, the CVQs would help better in that one. Certainly. So I wish I wish I could maybe um, have somewhere where you'd have to build all these little classrooms where you could mm -hmm. you could do the CVQs. And let's say col um, culinary arts, um, the F and N aspects of things. I cannot do this course. I wish yeah. I could do it, but I haven't got a kitchen. Yeah, you, you know? have to get a certified, not just a kitchen, but a certified yes, kitchen, yes, you know, the certified yes, facility. You need to have all the facilities for you to do that. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. But you need a room for that anyway. Yeah. yeah. And this room cannot be like a standard class. This That's room has to be for that particular subject. Skill, yes. Yeah. So 
I, I, I wish I could have it, yes, but it's a long shot. It's um, a long shot. Well, I hope it's not too far because I think um, that would really give the kind of expansion that is, I can foresee people from other regions coming, other islands coming from the region, literally coming home, coming to Dominica um, within the area to get, to just to attend school every day rather than probably doing it online. Um, right. Getting the experience of a campus, getting the experience of a classroom. Uh, the so mm -hmm. I thought about that, good idea. I thought about that and even think about the houses in Picard, you know. Yeah. Um, I also yeah. had some conversations with, um, with ACC, you know, I try to li liaise with a lot of maybe international people trying to, you know, try to reach out there. Yeah. That's right, the country. And they wanted Dominica to be a provider and uh, academics was, you know, a very good option with the way that we have structured the school, etc. But, you know, the demands, the yeah. silvers and all those things, it's like, while they do on-demand examinations, Mm -hmm. We had to provide a server to their specification, and that yeah. cost a lot of money to take it out in the store. And we didn't have those kind of funds. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is something that we would like to do because our our individuals that do the exams, some of them, some of them went to Barbados to do the examinations. Mm -hmm. Some of them went to Saint Lucia, just there. But we could do it in Dominica. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of those are things I wanted to add. Let's say, for example, <laughs> sports. I just wanted to add this one. Yeah, yeah. We do sports. We do PE in secondary schools. And after PE in secondary schools, it's a full stop. You notice? Yep. The so students just do PE <laughs> and just put a full stop at it. And our students get one good grades in PE. And they do the practical aspect. But there's an associate degree in the sports, in the sports aspect of physical education, mm -hmm. and where you would focus on it. Have the you can do some food in it, like F and N is part of the course, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can do the business aspects, so you can have management of business or entrepreneurship added into that course. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we haven't got much professional coaches in the country. Let's say, for example, I I may not the, the football director, right? Um, in in Rose, he was a principal. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the, the one of the most qualified Dominican um, coaches. Mm -hmm. but let's say we don't have as much qualified coaches in 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 basketball, for example. So if we have to do this course and we have to do a, a school based assessment. These students have to be assessed by a professional coach yeah. in a professional arena. Mm -hmm. But we have got all those things. So now that call, while we may have individuals that came from Cuba and, and different areas right here in Portsmouth that could actually do this course, the SBA serves as a challenge for us. And then our students just have to get PE. You cannot go and tell the bank that you have a one in PE because it's not a requirement to go in the bank. You mm -hmm. cannot do other jobs to say you have a one in PE. So it's like you just do it at high school and you just forget about it after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people looking at PE like, why are you doing PE? Mm -hmm. But it's something that you understand the whole functions, the body, the muscles, and all those things. And you do the basics. Mm -hmm. But continuity should be something that we should have in the country. Yeah, and because I wish I could add it. Yes, I mean the university I went to. There is a course called kinesiology, uh, which is all about sports. And a number of people go ahead and do this degree and come out as, you know, um, sports. You know, whatever. I don't know if it's professional. Well, I mean, they, they become professional coaches. They work with schools um, in hockey and other such um, uh, programs. You know, the such disciplines of sports. So I mean. I think it's something, I think it's a, it's the need to create the awareness that um, there is a long-term benefit in doing something like that. But if we don't connect the future with the now um, for the students, then they will never know. Um, and yeah. of course, if we don't create the avenue for them to see that there is a future in it, then obviously it will fall flat on its face like it's probably happening now, right. which is very unfortunate, you know. Mm -hmm. So, So I really hope that we can, transition to that. Um, I think academics, 
is on the right track. Um, you clearly have done a lot of your research, which is why you have chosen the path that you have and the direction in which you have chosen to, direct, to, to teach or to pass on knowledge and skills to your, to your students. I almost said trainees because that's the language we speak in my work. <laughs> yes, but, but seriously, I mean, it, it, it is clear that you have done a lot of groundwork. Um, and you know what you're talking about, you and your, your passion for what you're talking about as well. I really hope somebody, the powers that be, can even help academics to, to, be, to become full blown, you know, in terms of getting the facility, the place to set up its institution. I mean, I think there is need to invest in such private entities uh, like yours that is willing to step out and make a difference. So that's why I think for me, it was important that we have that kind of dialogue tonight and let people understand what it is that academics is all about. It's not, it's a hidden secret, but it's not a secret to be hidden. It's something for people to know about and for us to market and promote as a community, but also as, as a nation. But not not only um, um, just like a support. Well, let's say the support is like for a long way, right? Yeah. A long way away. Um, if the powers to be would maybe um, here and maybe want to support. But even those that listening now, I yeah. I try to give scholarships to individuals that um, that need. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know we need we need the monies to teach, right? We are just the pipeline for the council to get the information to the students, they register to the exam, they pass the examinations, they get the qualifications, they're going to go out there and they're going to better themselves. Mm -hmm. But there are some individuals that really need a scholarship and we give scholarships here, but it's yeah. on us, right? It's on us. So um, we give, let's say 50, we give 55%, we take 55% off the tuition okay. for those that need Right, mm -hmm. that would come up to like three thousand dollars over a two-year period. Yeah. Um, for those that need, so we reduce the fee would be reduced to maybe just a hundred and something dollars, hundred and fourteen dollars, um, for for those that need. But they would need to get, let's say, five ones. Remember, yeah. from the time um the tuition at college is free, then maybe these standards going to be affected because you're going to get everybody coming to college. So now you're going to have the admission board going to work very hard for them to know which students that are going to be accepted. They will look at their grades, look at their transcripts, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have a lot of students, right? Mm -hmm. In the college present because it's, it, the tuition is free. But yeah. we set the criteria at five ones for those that need. If you really need it, then yeah. you need to be learning, right? Because you should know quite well that if you need assistance, you need to work hard so that you can earn it, right? If you get seven ones, mm -hmm. we give for academic excellence. So we, we give 75%, we take 75% off the tuition. That would be 3,000, about $3,800 for over the two years. That would drop um, the tuition for a student monthly to about $80, $80. Are you now telling we, me that we, we tr we're trying to do all those things. So, yeah. you know, some. Are you telling me that every student who has, who gets seven subjects, seven ones, mm -hmm. is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any student, we, any we're student. A, we'll allow them to write, write for the scholarship. We want okay. them to, want to them have to that, be. that international, the way, that universities work, you right. write for the scholarship. So right. if you have, if you write for the scholarship, and let's mm -hmm. say we're offering, um, let's say four, five scholarships for right. those right. that get seven ones, okay. then you write for it. Mm -hmm. We sit down as a team. We look at it. Hi, my name is Iman Williams. Mm -hmm. I'm from. I received that amount of amount of grade ones, mm -hmm. and um, I am writing for this scholarship because I feel I am blah, 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 right, blah, blah, blah. Right. So that is how it is. You write a few paragraphs, you know, tell us about yourself, why you think you need this scholarship, etc. Right. But we'll not have like everyone. So we'll have like five of them offered. Okay. Because not to say we are a very large institution. Right, right. But that is, that is what we do. So it's on us. Now that is money that I would maybe need for me to 
keep the operation going. That's it. But if we could possibly get one, two individuals that just want to help a student, okay. we we would we would we would accept that with open arms. Because so, some yeah. students really need it. While mm -hmm. some students may feel, okay, if I go to college, it's free, but they still have to be paying the boss. Yeah. So the students just need a lot of assistance. And sometimes we don't have that kind of assistance, you know, around until somebody comes out and speak and try to beg and ask and, you know, yeah. those things. Yeah, so, so. so I'm hearing you saying to the folks out there, if they are willing and able right. to assist with offering a, it could be part of the scholarship, it could be, you know, a full scholarship to a, a student that they should come and partner with academics in order for that to happen. How can somebody, if somebody's out there right now, looking at us, listening and say, wow, okay, I didn't know I could actually do this. I am willing to support this school, support one student this upcoming semester or, or school year. Um, how can they contact you? How can they get in contact with academics in order to do that? Well, we have our, um, our phone number, obviously. Mm -hmm. Seven six seven two seven six six one four four. So I put the seven six seven because you never know you have yeah. overseas individuals, you know. So yeah. two seven six six one four four. That is the school number, and mm -hmm. also our website. Our our website. Well, not the website. The email address. Mm -hmm. The email address would be academics S O L. That is A C E. D E M I X S O L at Outlook.com. You know, A C A D E M I X S O L at Outlook.com. Yeah. And we will gladly receive this email. We would respond, we would find out about the sponsor, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, I have the students. You know, select the students, or if the students write in, you know, have them get the scholarship, etc. Because I, in the time pass, yeah, in time pass, I actually paid for students to do the exams, and you know, where you gone? Yeah, <laughs> right, we have a little free. You never give. Um, oh. when you think of getting it back when you give it then there's where the disappointment would come mm -hmm. so i some students they they just i never see them again <laughs> but wow. that still didn't didn't deter me to do that because i also assist some students and mm -hmm. they did well in the exams and you know that pushed me forward so even for the exam fees um yeah. I wish I could maybe just give scholarships fully on the exam fees, but you know that is not like our fees, so I can only control mm -hmm. fully the tuition of the school. Um, when come to the exam fees, you know, if you already give scholarship on the tuition, yeah. Tough, yeah. then if you take from the tuition to pay the exam fees, then you're actually putting yourself in a little hole, you know, because they have actually built a forecast. Mm -hmm. to see what you should actually what where you should be after every month to see if you'll be successful if you can actually do certain things you know with money etc that is more content but well, um, I, want to, I want to also challenge. i also want to maybe urge you to to some to maybe do a reach out as well i mean i'm happy that you're talking about it now like the need for partnership the need for um private individuals to come out and sponsor a student or or and or even towards paying their for their exams if they can't contribute towards the actual tuition itself you know maybe do that kind of drive closer to the time of of, of registration for exams uh, maybe send send help to send private letters as a school to some key institutions in Portsmouth that I know that your business is bringing business to I'm sure I'm sure right. there are some little businesses that your business is bringing in, bringing business to you know and so I think if, if people see the partnership, if people see the benefit, then hopefully they can come on board. But I'm happy that that call is going out now and I'm urging folks out there, you know, if you know somebody, maybe you are listening, but you can't do it yourself, but you know somebody or an institution who is able to assist a student 
um, of academics to pursue their education and or to get the exams done, um, that they can come on board and sponsor. So please share the information with them. Let them know they can contact the school. Um, the number is there uh, on the screen as well as the email address and so that they can reach out. You know, I really hope they AC, can ACA, sorry, I just, I just oh, look at the, yeah, at right. the email address. ACA, okay. yes. ACA, that's that my ACA. error there. Let me get this right. correct. Thank you. Yeah, so that's a little error there, guys. Sorry. Um, it, it should be academics and not... Yes, academics. Yeah, that was my typo and nothing else. Yeah. All right. So so thanks for that. So yes, we're asking folks to, to you know, come on board, support a student, support a student this school year and see how we can impact a life, at least a life. Maybe two people. Maybe you can do all of it, get somebody to partner with you and support at least one student out there um, at academics to make a difference. I'm happy that you shared that because it, it's really, really uh, important for the students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes all right well we're winding now towards the end i i want to i want to give you the opportunity to give your final words to the public and um you know to the general public yes and even maybe prospective students or parents who might be thinking well um should i send my student to that school is it too late for them to register i right know um school is just about starting on monday I mean, what, what happens? So you can throw the final, final comments. Uh, okay, everybody. well, the final comments, I'm going to have it. Um, I'm going to try to make it short. All try, right. Try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, the notion, the first thing, the notion that to come to academics is big money, it is not, it is, it is totally false. We obviously need, it's a private school, so it's not going to be like free tuition, just walk in and then, you can just walk out, you know. So you will be paying um, a education resource fee as long as you come to academics. Mm -hmm. We have an online platform. We we partner with an Australian company actually, and this platform is an SIS and LMS together. So it haven't got much in the world for this one. Okay. So we can put all resource materials there. We do online learning. Um, we do remote testing. We have pre-recorded videos, we have live lectures. We also do on-site teaching. We would have on-site teaching for some of the practical courses where some students really need to have the teacher there to show it, um, what is what needs to be done. Like for example, physics, um, electrical engineering, chemistry, biology, um, building engineering, animation, game design for some of the technical aspects of it, digital media, you know, those technical courses. Right. We would have um, on-site lectures. We have our structure where we would possibly have these courses like on-site lectures, like maybe once a week, because we would have um, once, or once a week or once every two weeks for some of them after we structure it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have... Um, the resource materials provided for the students because there are some books that are about two hundred dollars, and you only go and use it for one course. Yeah, yeah. So we provide resource materials for the students. So students that come to academics not buying much textbooks, or if they buy buying textbooks at all, yeah. because we provide the materials for them online. So that is the distance learning aspect mm -hmm. where you could have your books and read and understand what is happening. And then there is the learn at your own pace, where we do the pre-recorded videos, you rewind, there is more concept and content mm -hmm. teaching. And mm -hmm. then you have the, the virtual aspect, the interactive videos, where you have the live lectures, where the teachers would be writing on the board and teaching, because we would do it with this board. So I can teach you all now, like write on the board, and then yeah. it would be on the screen, we record it, and then we send it for the students, for the students to actually, you know, go back and forth. So we'll not post those videos on YouTube because everybody will be speaking. Yeah. So we would have these videos sent to the students. And then we'll have the on-site lectures where it would be practical. So that is the only four methods. That is the four ways we can actually do, we can teach individuals. But I want to mix up all of them. Yeah. To see and then to assess. Because I know that is the, the way we can get better results than this year, which would be better than the previous year. Yeah. Um we we're more like a family inside here. Um we have a very good structure. 
um, even if COVID is 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 in our country, um, mm -hmm. education should not stop. Education yeah. cannot stop, not even slowed down by COVID, because we have to use not not look at the disadvantage of of the situation, but mm -hmm. we have to use the situation to try to reach to the students because they are at the home. Yeah. During the lockdown, I feel I reach out to students more. <laughs> and I asked the students to do a little survey when we had to do all the maths and so on online. And mm -hmm. I could send these videos for the students. And some of them told me, listen, sir, I'm not coming back to a classroom. So you but, have to find a way to reach me now. <laughs> right. So <laughs> it's like they enjoyed it. I could send yeah. the videos for them and they could recap. No more, mm -hmm. sir. I did not understand that last class. You know, I send the video for you. You could re mm -hmm. rewind and so on. Okay. And that is the method. We have remote testing because the examination is going to be online. So yeah. we'll test our students, all multiple choice, our exams. We had um, some structured exams online. AutoCAD is online. Building is online. Electrical engineering, the teacher completed the syllabus online. So we actually had a good driver. Not thank God for COVID, you know, but mm -hmm. in a way we can say, we yeah. can say if COVID did not come, we would not be so far ahead, That's you know, to see yeah. how we can actually better it. So now we have actually done analysis. We have done some statistics for us to see mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. students would like, what they would hate for us to better it this year. So we'll not be starting on the seventh. Okay. We'll be starting on the 14th, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll be starting normal. All classes would be normal. I have no okay. pressure for this school year. I have no pressure whatsoever. Excellent. We will be doing everything like normal, but we just have to give the students the orientation for them to learn the platform. We have an app that we would have give the students, they would learn on their phones. Yeah. They would have, the parents could have access to the platform because it have a parent login. I wish I could I, I could show it to all you, but that is not before now. But we have the parents login. Next time we'll do something. So the <laughs> yeah, so at least they would, they would see all what that yeah. can be done. So the parents yeah. login, the parents would not see the students' content because they are not the ones learning. Yeah. But they will see the punctuality of the students. Every teacher would have their smartphone in the class and they would do their their, their register on their phones. They would put present, late, present, late. And when they hit submit, their parents could be sitting on in their office and just log in and they would see if their, their students is sitting in the class. Fair. Now, all those yeah. things are very important for online learning. Mm -hmm. Because a mother can tell a child, go in your room, go and study, you know you have class today. And then the teacher is not saying the yeah. student. Yeah. So with this system, the teacher will put present from the time we start that online lecture, mm -hmm. and then the parents will see if the child in the room, in the class, or if the child just go in the room and not listening to the parents. All right, so, so well, let, me, let me just clarify that you do have some face-to-face -face classes as yes, well. Yes, we we'll have, we'll have a few on-site lectures. Okay, um, so, so so in terms of the protocol, I know that the Ministry of Education has sent out um, some protocol as for, mm -hmm. you know, as it pertains to COVID. How, how are you all with that? Well, the on-site lectures would not be for the classes, the large classes, because right. the large classes would be like the compulsory classes, mm -hmm. um, the the integrated maths. The, you, 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 you can do everything online for integrated maths. The pre-recorded videos would be way better than a student sitting down and listening to me teach calculus because you can rewind and do all those things. So for integrated maths, you will have a large number there. For um, communication studies and Caribbean studies, Caribbean integration, you're teaching those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. You can do those things with pre-recorded videos and have online lectures. Those You don't need a student to be in the class to ask you, Miss, what is CARICOM or what is this or what is that? Mm -hmm. the, the classes that we'd have on site for, they are the smaller classes. They are the classes like building, where you'd have maybe about six to 10 students, some of them. And you could, you space them out, just like when we did the examination. So we'd not have 
would try to reduce air condition inside of the classroom yeah. because obviously as a science person, mm -hmm. the virus would, the, the circular motion of the air, you going to have, the virus might levitate a little more, yeah. you know, and there's where we want to, to avoid that. Just like when CXC, we had CX in the in the in the in the school mm -hmm. with no AC, and then the students were socially distanced. And we could have twelve individuals in the class, a six feet apart, sit down in a certain structure in the classroom. So okay. that is what we we will be doing. So the smaller classes, they will be the ones doing the on site, like physics, chemistry. They never big classes, mm -hmm. so we can follow all these protocols. And Very we're comfortable, we, we feel comfortable, we we know we are well ahead um, because we more of a smaller school, you know, right. we, and manage we, can, we can manage it better, yes. Okay. All right. Well, let me thank you, Mr. Williams, for sharing with us about the Institution Academics School of Learning as the right. dean of course and also sorry as the director and also as the dean of academics there uh your knowledge of course is very broad this is your brainchild as we say and we are very grateful and want to wish academics school of learning all the best for future success future growth and development in the country but also as you impact regionally and internationally as well so thank you very much for accepting to be our guest tonight and I really hope that some people will come on board and truly support academics as we would like to see happen. And most importantly, as a, a community that we will rally around th this institution, it is ours in the town and we need to support it at best. So thank you very much, Mr. Williams, and all the best for the new school year um, to you and your students and, of course, your staff. And thank you, Ms. Paulman, for the opportunity. Yes, yeah. welcome. Yeah. yeah. All right. So there you have it, folks. Um, you had Mr. Mr. Heman Williams, who was our guest tonight, and he had so much to share with us about the, the institution, Academics School of Learning. If you want to know more about the school, you can visit the website. Just search, do a, a quick search for Academics School of Learning, and you will easily find them on Google. You can, as as he said, you can you can uh, contact the school. We've given we've given the number and also the email address at which you can reach out to them if you want to sponsor a student if you want to be a part of the journey of a student there to get you know some keep uh exams done and or get some some qualifications behind their names that can propel them to university after it's a good chance for it's a good time for you to support a student so reach out to mr williams he's very accommodating and welcoming they will truly, truly appreciate this support. So with this, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. And you may still share the link with other people. They can go back and look at the look at our discussion, and hopefully they can co come on board and support academics going forward. So we wish you all the best. Have a great weekend. Let us remember to be vigilant. This COVID thing is out there. We don't know who has it, where it is, etc. We know of some official cases, but we just don't know what could be out there. So let's be very responsible and let us look out for each other, your neighbor, your friends. I wish you all the best. God bless you. See you again at another virtual community dialogue uh, on a Friday evening with C. Paul. God bless you. Thank you once again. <laughs>